Hello, this video is taking a look at the Beaver Builder theme and what is new in version 1.6, which as I'm recording this is still in beta or beta, but I think I'm fairly safe because as I look at the change log over here, I'll see it's the fourth version, which is a release candidate version. So we're not expecting any major new additions, just a bit of bug squashing before it's finally released, or at least I hope so. But it seemed fairly safe to cover all of the new additions, of which there are quite a lot. Here's taken from the change log, and you can see quite a lot of stuff here. Now, some of this is more routine stuff, so there's some updates to Font Awesome, some updates to the Google Font Library, and also we've got a couple of new translations added for Mexicans and Colombians. But we've also got some more major stuff, I guess, for developers. We've got four new hooks added. So we've got the before post, after post, before post content and after post content, as well as a new filter logo text, which allows you to change the old text on your logos. But for the rest of this, I'll be able to cover it all in the customizer. So let's start from the top. Now I've created here a top bar, two column top bar with text on the left and the menu and social icons on the right. Now it's the social icons which have changed in 1.6. Now you're not really going to notice this unless you peep at the code, but it is now using Font Awesome Library, which is used throughout the rest of the theme. Now, what was used before, and I can show you this with the source code, is this mono social icon CSS. You can see it's a CSS file, but it's actually pulling in its own font here. And that was what was being used to show those different social icons in the top bar. Now, I believe this isn't updated as it used to be, but it doesn't really matter because Font Awesome has become so much more awesome that it includes everything that's needed. And as it's used in the rest of the theme, it seems, I guess, to the team more logical to add it here as well. So that's what's happening. Might be useful for those people who do their own CSS styling just to know this. There's also another change here while I'm talking about this, the positioning in the customizer of where you set these. I think it used to have its own tab, but it's now under general on the bottom here, social links, so you can add them here. So that's that. Let's take a look over here at this menu. As you can see here, I've set up a drop down one here, so it's got sub menu items. And as you can see to the right here, we've got this little pointy down arrow here. Now that didn't used to exist before. I did a video on how you could add that to your WordPress menus by just copying bit of the code from Font Awesome Library and adding it. Well, we don't need to do that anymore because if we go into header, into nav style, we've now got this where we can just enable those indicators like this and it will apply to any of the menus. So if I had drop downs here, it would show here and obviously we can disable them as well and make them disappear. So that's a really handy, useful thing that we I constantly use so that's good now a couple of other header things which are frequently asked for um, I remember Grant Ambrose from Beyond Beaver doing a video to answer a question which came up quite a few times I think about those folks who had a logo which looked great in the header but didn't look so great if they wanted a sticky header and We've got the solution here. You probably spotted it earlier there. There's a different logo to the header one. That's not a great example, but that's the common thing. You often need a more rectangular one because there's less space than what you can have in your main header, or you maybe need to change the color as well. That can now be set here by just going into header logos where you've got this extra option to pull in one for those fade in um, sticky headers. It's only the fade in ones because the fixed header and the shrink headers are actually just the same header here. This actually brings in a new header. So that's a, a really useful addition commonly comes up. Now one that actually I've been asked quite a lot because I've talked about those hamburger menus and what we can do with those. Well, one question I've often been asked is how can you show that hamburger menu instead on desktops? Well, now we can. We just need to go into nav layout and this has been added here so I can just show you by going to it if I set this to always it's going to come up on desktop 
and we can decide whether we want to show it just on medium or small or small only as is the default or just all the time and we could in fact actually set it to menu button but I think that would not be something that would be that popular but there we can do it let me set this back okay right let's move on to something that really caught my eye because I've been doing some updates to WooCommerce sites for version 3 and they added it actually it's quite problematic for me but they added a new product gallery which is quite whizzy and I just want to show you that they've added this also to version 1.6 of the Beaver Builder theme and it's really quite quite nice let me just go over and find a product where I've set this up here's one with gallery images attached to it and we can see what this new thing is in WooCommerce version 3 it allows you to home in over here but it also lets you use these gallery image which you set to flick through and show them in the main image area and that's the new thing they've added the code in that makes that possible now you can disable this if I just go over into the content area into WooCommerce layout we can see that it's set here now we can disable this and what happens here and this is a criticism of Woo as far as I'm concerned what they've done previously before when you set these they were just thumbnails that were placed under the main image now if you don't have this um, carousel running you just get attached images rather than thumbnails here so if you click on them uh, when this is disabled it's going to open up pop them up like in the light box but you have to use your back arrow to get back to the page so I think it's a bit of a flaw I have asked the beaver builder team now whether they could sort of do something to make up for this sort of what I think is a bit of a mistake on WooCommerce's part but anyway that's it it's a, a new addition I really quite like that and I'm probably going to be using that quite a bit um, other things that have been added with WooCommerce is that we are now able to select sidebar locations so we've added categories in here so if you want to turn on a sidebar let's go to the shop page and we can decide whether we want a sidebar to show left or right on just a shop page but not on the single posts or just on the category pages now at the moment just in the beta version I think it's a little bit buggy it certainly is on my multi install at the moment but that's what's going to work and once you've done that and you have set a sidebar you won't see it here at the moment but I can just show you under once you've saved that and set a sidebar when you go into widget areas here you'll find that there is a WooCommerce sidebar separate to the one that you might use as your primary one for blogs so that becomes available okay so let me go back content into WooCommerce I'm going to set no sidebar again so that's a new addition there we've got one other addition here where we can set the number of products that are in a row here so we've got three columns there and I could just with a click here now change this to four and go up to six if I want so that's something new that's added to 1.6 as well which is pretty handy I think and I think I'm getting close to the end finally let's just go on to the changes on blog post layout so I'll go over to my blog section over here and we'll go into a blog post itself and I hope I remember where this is let's see um, yes I think so no I may be in the wrong place bear with me blog layout post layout that's it <laughs> okay so the new additions here is that you are able to set as you can see here I've set within a single post here I've set the featured image to show beside post now this was here before you can have it above or below the post title but what's new is you can decide which image size is going in there so I can make that into a thumbnail if I want and it's going to pick up on any other custom sizes here so it's picking up on the WooCommerce sizes as well as one that I've actually 
placed in myself in my functions PHP. So that's uh, just a new addition there. And finally, you might remember that we're talking about those hookable areas for developers at the beginning here. Well, you can see this has been employed here with this new addition, which is the author box, which is wasn't there before and it can be hidden if you don't want it again. But that's a, a new addition there and that's pretty much it. I think I've covered everything. Let me just go over to my page here just to make sure. And I'm just praying that nothing major gets added to this before this video um, goes out uh, or before it's released. Yep, I think that's pretty much covered it. I hope this was useful to you. If it was, then, you know, please press like and show your support. And if you didn't like it, then just kindly let me know. And that's it. I think in my next video, I'm doing some interviews with uh, Beaver Builder community members where they're going to show me their work. So we're going to screenshot that and show the back end and the front end and how some of their projects came into being. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I'll catch you then, hopefully. All right, that's me done. Bye-bye.